Ao, I'm Memphis Baines, and here's a quick tutorial on how to install and properly use my Halftone brush pack. Now, I do happen to use Paint Tool Sci 2. I know that if you purchase the first version, you'll be able to download Paint Tool Sci 2 without having to purchase anything else. Or, if you're like me and you just found some way to take it off the internet, uh, you can do either, but this one is specifically built for Paint Tool Sci 2. I'm not sure how the settings in uh, just normal Sci will apply to this. You're going to notice that there's three separate groups titled R, B, and Y. R is for red, B is for blue, and then Y is for yellow. These are your primary colors that uh, you will be using to overlay to make different tones. And it's incredibly important that you use the specific brush for the specific color. This will grant you that circular effect that you see a lot when you mix multiple colors. It's also important because of how multicolored halftones work when you lay them over and you texture them. It specifically is designed to create the color you desire, rather than just overlaying flat color on flat color. It's not going to look right. If you're going for that specific printed look, you're going to want to make sure you do this correctly. So you install it like any other texture. When you go to these settings, you're going to want to make sure that you have a separate brush for every single color with every single size, one through three. It's one being the lightest, three being the darkest. You're going to also want to make sure that every single texture percentage size is the same across the board. It can be any size you want, you just have to make sure that there is consistency. Once you have that set up, it's important to label the colors correctly. You don't have to necessarily go by the colors in which I have given, however, they are going to have to stay in a group. This is because the tilt and angle that they are at corresponds with the similar color. After that, you're all set to go. You got the brushes in, and that's it. I would recommend putting a select pen and a select eraser in your toolbox as well. A fill can't hurt, and so can't a normal pen. This is just in case you need full color, or if you don't have some areas lined and need to separate colors. So how to use them? I am going to include a couple of color palettes in which you can play around with, however, you can use any form of primary colors in this palette. You can, you know, go buck wild. Basically, the point of this, as we all learned in preschool, primary colors mixed together to make secondary colors. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, how are you gonna- <laughs> Got a cat. How are you going to mix them? That's the question. So you're going to want to use three separate layers and multiply each layer. I normally wait until the end to do this, but whatever sketch you have, you might want to duplicate three times and then use those three layers. One for red, one for blue, one for yellow. This is imperative. This will help you mix them later on. As I said before, set them all to multiply and get started coloring. I would also recommend, if you have a specific color palette, to make color swatches to show you what color you will get when mixing what. After a bit of time, you can start to sort of gauge that yourself. However, if you're starting out, it's very helpful. Once you complete that portion, you're going to want to lock your layer. This is because you're going to color the entire layer, including the line art, with the color selected. Whether that be red, blue, yellow. Repeat this for every single one, and make sure that, yet again, all three layers must be on multiply. Now, if you want a bleeding effect, you can take one layer and move it just a smidge to any side as well as another, and you'll get this more um, bleeding print sort of effect. Once you do that, you're basically done. If you want to add a background, you're going to have to also add some other color background to it, unless you're going for that printed on top of something look. However, if you want it to hold the same color while changing the background, you're going to have to select the surrounding area, selection invert, and then make a new layer and color the entire area white. This will help keep your drawing the same color while having a different colored background. That's the gist of it. 
I hope that you can find some good use out of this texture packed. I know that I was desperately looking for one and could not find one, so I had to make it myself. I hope um, that was clear enough. If you have any questions, just leave comments below. Remember, please don't uh, take credit for the um, brush and textures. Uh, you, you don't have to say I made it on every single post you use using it, but um, please don't repackage these without credit. Thanks and good luck.